Yay! Welcome back to another episode! Today's a special day because today we are going to do one of the designs that was requested inside the comments section. Today we are going to make this lamp. Behold! It's just a representation of a lamp. It doesn't have all the electrics inside it and it doesn't have all the fasteners and whatnot. But it should be good enough for what we want to do with it, which is make a render. We'll come to design, render, and here we'll play around with uh, some of the rendering options and make a nice picture for a catalog of this lamp. So let's get to it. We'll go ahead and as always, we'll start by clicking file, new design. And we'll get started by, oh, uh, by making this base here. So the base has got a, a revolved profile, it's got a, a cap at the bottom, and it's got a, a switch, or at least a representation of a switch in there. So we're gonna modify, uh, we're gonna make that now. It's also got a little hole at the back for the electrics and a hole for the stem. So we'll come along and we'll say, let's go sketch on the ground plane. Ooh, a perspective mode, awful. We'll come to display settings and we'll say camera and make sure orthographic is selected. Cool. Next we'll say circle and we'll go ahead and we're going to draw a circle of 140 millimeters diameter. Good stuff. Click finish sketch and we'll extrude this up 20 millimeters. Oh, the perspective mode's come back. Let's say camera orthographic. There we go. Okay, cool. Next we want to take off this sharp edge because you don't want to cut yourself on a desktop lamp. That would suck. So we'll go and we're going to say modify and we'll say fill it and pick this edge here and we'll say eight millimeters. Good stuff. Okay, so what we want to do next is we want to shell this out so that it's hollow like our, like our previous one. Let's go and we'll say modify shell and we are going to select the face that we want to remove which is this lower face and we'll give it a thickness. So we'll go ahead and we'll make it four millimeters thick. Good stuff. Okay, so we're going to add a few features onto this. We are going to add a hole at the back here, which is going to be for the stem. Um, a hole at the back side, which is going to be for the electrics. Um, a square hole at the front, which is going to be for the switch. And we'll add a cap on the bottom of it. So let's go, we'll create a sketch on the surface. And we will make a guide circle and we'll make that circle, uh, we'll say 95 millimeters in diameter. Uh, we'll make it construction by selecting it and hitting the X button. Alternatively, you can hit this little icon here. So uh, next we'll come along and we'll make a circle and we'll click circle here and we'll say 10 millimeters. Cool. And we will use the vertical constraint to vertically align it with the origin. Good stuff. Click finish sketch. And next we'll extrude that circle. So we'll hit E or hit the extrude button here. Choose the profile <clears throat> and we could click and drag the arrow if we're lazy, but we're not lazy. We are going to go ahead and change the extent type to two object and click the top surface there, not bottom surface, bottom surface. Okay. Next, what we want to do is make a little hole at the back for the electrics. So we'll make a sketch and this time we're going to draw it on this origin plane here. <clears throat> now we want the circle to be in the middle of this flat portion. So what we'll do is we'll use uh, project geometry. So we'll come to create, project and include and hit project. Whenever I say project, you can use the P button to project. So we'll say project and we'll pick this line here and this line here and click OK. And you'll see in purple the projected lines there. So again, we uh, can make them both um, construction by selecting them and hitting the construction button or hitting X. Next, we'll go ahead and we're going to draw a line that will start off at the origin and go up to that first ridge. And we'll select it and make it construction as well. And we're going to use that to make a circle and we'll make the circle at the midpoint of that line. Good stuff. And we'll say six millimeters. The electrical engineers will hate us for such a small aperture, but it is what it is. We'll say six millimeters. Finish sketch, say extrude. And we could cut this out as a, by dragging the arrow, but we're going to say distance to object and pick this surface here. For the operation, make sure that cut is selected. Good stuff, good stuff. Okay, next we'll go ahead and we will do the uh, cap at the bottom. 
So we'll go here and we are going to say sketch and we're going to make a sketch on this bottom ridge here, on the bottom face. And rather than drawing a whole new circle, what we're going to do is we are going to say create project and we'll pick this edge here. We're going to pre project that edge. Click finish sketch and we'll extrude it, not downwards, but upwards. So we'll say distance negative two millimeters. And for the operation, we are going to create a whole new body with this. So we're going to change the operation from join to new body. There we go. And click OK. So if you expand our bodies, what we'll find is we've got two bodies. We've got body one and body two. So body one is the base. So we'll give it the name base. And body two is the, uh, the base cap. So we'll call it base good stuff you can toggle their visibility by hitting the little eyeball icon next to them good stuff next what we want to do is we want to make uh this little switch so this switch is interesting we can come along if i come along to inspect and say uh where are we section analysis pick that edge there we can see that this switch actually hugs the inside of a square hole so we'll and just uh, toggle the switch there. We've got a square hole in the base, and then that gets plugged into there. It's just a representation. It's not an actual switch. It'll probably be a common component. So here we go. We'll go and make a the square aperture. So we'll make a sketch on the top here, and let's go ahead. We'll draw a construction line that will come down here, and we'll say maybe that uh, comes down maybe 40 millimeters. Make a construction. Create a center point rectangle. There we go. And we'll give it some dimensions. Let's go ahead. Uh, we will say that that is 16 millimeters long and maybe eight millimeters wide. There we go. And click finish sketch and cut that through. So we'll hit extrude and we'll say cut to the other side or well, just down to the bottom. Actually, we can hide the base extrude. Yep to the underside there. Great. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we are going to make a, a switch. Ooh, I might want to make that a little bit wider now that I look at it. We'll go ahead and enter the sketch by double clicking the little sketch in the timeline. And we'll say that that's 12 wide and that'll be a nice luxury wide button. Good stuff. Okay, so yeah, we've got our base and base cap. What we're going to do next is create this switch. So we can see that there's a, a portion that hugs the edge. Um, and then there is, um, how to say this, uh, the representation of a rocker. Now it would be possible to create one body and to subtract, uh, subtract the, um, the switch, uh, the, you know, the, the, the aperture from it. That is possible. It's much easier to do it that way. But what I want to do is show you the sweep tool. Um, so what we're going to do is create a little sweep. We'll come along here and say, start sketch. And we're going to make a sketch on this surface here. And if you want to hide the material beforehand, you can click slice. But uh, before you do, go ahead and let's hit project. So P and we'll select that base there. And we'll click slice to get rid of the material while we're sketching. And now let's go ahead and we'll draw that little lip. So we'll say it comes out two millimeters. We're just winging it here. It comes up 0 0.5 millimeters. Uh, it goes in 2.5 millimeters and then comes down and goes in again and out again and boop, boop, boop. There we go. Uh, we'll go ahead and just use an equals constraint so that we make the top lip the same height as the bottom lip and the same length as the bottom lip. There we go. And we'll use a coincident constraint to connect this corner with this little corner here. And then it'll embarrass me. Um, we'll delete that line and we'll create a coincident constraint between that corner there and there. Good stuff. And yep, we've got a vertical line there. Good. Okay, so we've got a profile, which is going to be our uh, the lip of our rocker. So we'll say finish sketch. And next, what we're going to do is draw a path along which the um, the uh, sweep is going to follow. So we'll say create a sketch on that vertical plane, and we'll come along here and click project. So P, and we'll click that edge there, 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 and there. And click OK. 
Good stuff. All right, next we'll come along and we'll say create and we'll say sweep. And what a sweep does is it grabs a profile or profiles and then it allows you to select a path and then it will sweep that profile along that path. Let me pick these. Sorry, I've got something very important to deal with. Hello, hello. I'm working. Let me work. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we'll say sweep profile and did it screw up there? Let's try again. We'll hit uh, create sweep Pick the profiles Yes, very good And we'll click path and now we'll click eh, That chain there. There we go. That chain there. Good And you can see that it's grabbed that profile and it sweeps it along that path for the operation, we're going to say new body because this is going to be its own switch. She's asleep on my lap now. We'll say OK. And now we can change the body here. We'll change it from body three to switch. Cool. All right. So um, if we were to hide the base, we could see that the switch looks like that so far. Um, and let's go ahead and we are going to turn that switch back on and we're going to make a sketch on the side here. And as before, we'll project the face on which we're drawing and we will slice the graphics. And now what we're going to draw is a, a crude representation of the, uh, of the switch, uh, of the actual rocker itself, or the, 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 the part that your finger touches. I don't know switches. Um, we'll say that's 2.5, maybe 3 tall. And we will draw a line like so. And I might actually make it a little bit fancy by making it an arc instead. We'll say an arc looks good. And now we will say finish sketch and we're going to extrude those two profiles to the other side here and we'll say join. Looks good. So we've got something that, that represents the switch in this case. Cool. Okay, so here we've got our base cap, we've got our switch, we've got the holes. So what we need to do next is create the stem. And I'll get out of perspective mode because it's driving me nuts. There we go. Um, here we go. And we'll end that section analysis by coming here to analysis and unticking the eyeball. And what we've got here is the stem. Now we've got two parts of the stem. We've got this rigid vertical portion. Um, which I believe includes a lip down below. And then we've got a, a flexible portion, which is, we're going to represent using a spline. So let's go ahead. We're going to make the uh, vertical por rigid portion. So we'll say create sketch and we're going to create it on this bisecting plane. And we'll come along here and we'll say slice. And now we'll go and click project and we'll cl choose the cross section of that circle here. And as well, this edge up here and down here. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to draw the cross section. Um, so here we'll make a vertical line and it'll go up 200 millimeters. There we go. Um, and then we'll make another line and this is going to represent the thickness. So we'll say two millimeters out and then it'll come all the way down. Whoop, whoop, whoop. The bottom here. And then we add in a disc for rigidity. Um, we will add in some dimensions. I don't know what, oh, that's not horizontal. We'll say horizontal vertical. Boop. One of these is not playing ball. How do we know? Well, we'll click the line and we'll click horizontal vertical. There we go. Now it's vertical and that one's horizontal. Good stuff. All right. So we'll click here and here. And now we can say that that thickness there is two millimeters and We'll say that the total width is maybe 10. Good stuff, good stuff. Okay, so we are going to revolve this around an axis, but we have to actually draw that axis. So we'll go ahead and we're going to choose a little line here. Book, book, and it's just going to be the center of that axis, easy. Um, so we'll go and say finish sketch. And next we'll go uh, revolve, pick the cross section of our Oh, did I draw a lid on it? Did I not? I, there's something wrong with my profile and it's not showing as close. Aha, a line is missing. I will show you a trick while we're in town. 
Um, if you can't extrude your revolver profile, it's likely that a, a line is missing from the, you know, to close the profile. So if you hit offset and you click what you think is the profile, uh, if you expand it out, you can actually see where the gap is. So we can see that there's no line, no lines that close this portion here. Do you see that? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to draw in those lines. We'll say line there and line there. There we go. Let's try that again. Revolve. And we'll pick these profiles. And for the axis, we'll pick this axis that we drew. Excellent. And now we've got our stem. So we'll say uh, operation, new body. Click OK. And we will say uh, that is the stem. And we'll say that that's the rigid portion. There we go, rigid. All right, so next what we're going to do is the flexible portion of the stem. So if you can imagine that this is perfectly rigid, uh, this is going to be uh, maybe plastic that's colored copper. Maybe, well, whatever they use for rigid stems these days, uh, flexible stems. So we'll say, uh, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna do a sweep. So it's going to be a path along which a profile is gonna be swept and the profile itself. So we'll go ahead and we'll say create sketch and we'll do it on the bisecting plane. And we are going to do a couple of things. We'll say project geometry and we'll click that top edge there and we'll make it a construction line. And next we'll draw a line that will come up and it'll be perfectly, oops, it'll be perfectly uh, vertical. So we'll say it'll come up uh, 10 millimeters. And now our spline begins. So we'll say fit point spline, pick that first point there, then one, two, three. I'm not that concerned about it, splines by their nature are craziness, but the way that they work is uh, you have a bunch of points in space uh, and at each of those points, you can control the degree and magnitude of the line. There we go. And uh, you can constrain each of these points. Um, so, uh, and they're used for making smooth curves like this. So what we'll do is we will come along here and say tangent between the spline and that vertical line that we drew. And now we'll come along here and we'll draw, uh, we'll, we'll get them roughly into position. I'm not too concerned about it. Um, but at the end, I will draw a little line that will be also 10 millimeters. And I will make that tangential to the spline. Good stuff. Now, not too concerned with the rest. Um, although we'll probably save on the craziness by getting it to be roughly into a nice shape. There we go. Splines can be a nightmare. All right, that doesn't look too bad. Okay, um, so uh, what we're going to do is we are going to add, uh, make this line here, the vertical line, uh, a 45 degree angle, um, just so that we can make the uh, the lamp a little bit easier. So we'll say 45 degrees. Ah, our spline's blown up. Don't crash, don't crash, good stuff. Okay, our spline will come out here. Here we go. And play around with our spline until it looks sensible. There we go. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, cool. So we've got our spline. Um, next, what we'll do is we will make a profile. So our profile is just going to be a cross section of the stem there. So we'll say create sketch, choose the stem, and we'll click project and we'll pick the entire face. Good stuff. Next, we'll say create sweep. And we'll create, uh, we'll choose that um, profile. And for the path, we'll pick the spline there. Good stuff. And you can imagine that this is a, a bendy portion. Um, now, uh, I'm not too fussed with the, the components this time. Uh, we could say operation. You could either join it to the, the stem or we could say new body. And we will call it uh, stem flexible. Flexible. Very good stuff. Okay. So, choo, 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 looking good so far. We'll save that. Always, always save. And we'll call it the lamp. Okay, next we're going to do the fun part, or at least the easy part. We are going to make the lamp shade. Um, so this is just going to be a simple profile that we're going to revolve around an axis, uh, and then we're going to shell it out as we did with the base. And it's got a few interesting features. Uh, it's got like a, a, a perfect dome at the back here, and... Um, uh, that's the only interesting feature. I need to get more creative with my shades. Uh, we'll come along here and we'll make a sketch on the bisecting plane. And we are going to draw a bunch of lines that are going to be representative of the shade. 
Um, now, for now, we don't care about the constraints, but we long term absolutely do care about the constraints. You know who doesn't care about constraints? Barbarians. And you're not a barbarian, are you? Um, there is actually a reason why uh, I leave the constraints until later. So we'll just draw an arc back here. Um, the reason why the constraints are left till later is because you want to make sure that the constraints that you've got in there are the ones that you intend. Um, sometimes I find that the ones that are in, uh, in like um, in, uh, added in there automatically by a fusion or by inventor uh, maybe aren't what you intended. Um, they generally do a good job there. So here, let's go ahead and we are going to add in a few constraints. So we'll say a perpendicular constraint between the end of the lamp uh, there and the central axis. Uh, we'll make a parallel constraint between the central axis and the outer edge. This will make it a nice cylinder. Um, and then we'll come along here and we'll add in a tangential constraint between this rear arc and this edge at the back. Um, and we can get it approximately in the right shape and the right size. There's one more change that we need to make. And that is here. Um, so the bulb at the back, I mentioned that it was a perfect dome. Um, I'll just, whoop, there we go. I mentioned that it was a perfect dome, um, which means that the arc has to be actually perpendicular to this central axis. And I'd love to say that you could come along here and add in a perpendicular constraint with the arc and the central axis, um, but you can't do that, not yet. You can in Inventor, um, so I have a feeling it will come in Fusion 360, but for the moment we have to use a creative workaround, which is not too bad. Uh, we'll come along here and create a line, and we'll just put an arbitrary length and size, uh, <laughs> size and angle. Um, and we'll do two things. We'll make it tangential to the arc, and then we'll make it perpendicular to the central axis. There we go. So now we've got an arc that happens to uh, be perpendicular to that central axis. And for good measure, we'll make a construction. We'll just make the lampshade a little bit wider, like so. And yeah, that's looking pretty good, pretty good. Um, there we go, good. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll create finish sketch. And we'll go and we'll create revolve and we'll pick the profile. And for the axis, we'll pick that central axis there. It's looking good. <laughs> that lampshade's looking a little bit big. Let's see if we can uh, edit the sketch. So to edit the sketch, we'll come along to the timeline and we'll find the sketch and we can right click it and say edit sketch. And we'll make it a little bit more narrow. So it's a bit more sensible. Here we go. Here we go. Nice, looks good. A bit too narrow. Let's try one more time. There we go. Perfection. Lovely. Okay. Uh, maybe a little bit. Eh. Eh. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So let's go ahead and we are, as with the base, going to shell this out. So we'll say shell. And we'll pick the face that we want to remove. And we can add in a thickness here. Now, because it's a lampshade, it doesn't need to be too thick. We'll go ahead and we'll make it, uh, or we'll make it three millimeters just for sake of exercise. Three millimeters, it's pretty armored. <laughs> uh, and we'll get rid of this sharp edge at the front here by hitting fill it, so F. And we'll pick this edge here and this edge here and say 1.5 mil. Good stuff, good stuff. Okay, so next is uh, actually the most complicated part of it. Um, in the in the lamp, we had a flange, and this flange is actually curved to the barrel. Now, there are lots and lots of ways of doing this, um, but I wanted to just show you the emboss tool and uh, patches and thickening. So it's a little bit of a convoluted way of achieving this, but uh, I just wanted to show you so that you know that it's possible. So what we're going to do is we are going to draw uh, the flange, but we're going to draw a 2D representation of the flange. So we'll make a sketch on this surface here. And now we're going to go and we will create an ellipse and we'll draw an ellipse and we're not going to give it dimensions yet. And we'll go ahead and add in the dimensions. So we'll say that that's 70 wide and maybe that's uh, 50 tall. Looks good. And we're going to add in a few circles. Now these are going to be the holes through which bolts are going to go. So we'll say circle there, circle there, circle there, and circle there. And we'll use the equals constraint to make sure they're all the same size. One, two, three, four. And we'll give one of them a size. So we'll say that that is a four millimeter hole. Oops, four millimeter hole. And we'll use dimensions to uh, fix them at uh, fixed distances. So we'll say 27 millimeters horizontally. And vertically, we'll say uh, 17, maybe 0.5. 
17.5. There we go. Cool. And one last hole, it's going to be for the electrics, which will project from this central hole here. So hit P and choose that central edge. Good stuff. Okay, so uh, here we've got the ability to extrude. Um, we could cut through and it would be in line, but what we want to do really is make a body that wraps around the barrel of our lamp. Now, like I said, this is a little bit of a strange way of, uh, of achieving this. It was more or less just to show you the, um, the, uh, the process of it. So here we'll come along, we'll say create, and we're going to say emboss. Uh, if you're asking how I'd do this in reality, it'd probably be a, a 3D sketch projected onto the surface. If you're interested in a video on how to do that, let me know in the comments below and I'll make that video. We'll say emboss, pick the profile here, and now for the faces, we'll pick the barrel of our lamp. And as you can see, uh, we've got a bit of like a sheet metal that's bent around the barrel of the cylinder. And you can tell it's not just an extrusion. It doesn't line up perfectly with the holes. This is actually wrapped around. So now what we want to do is we want to cut holes that happen to be perpendicular to these parts. Now that, that's actually uh, harder than, the, than it sounds. What we're going to do is we are going to create what's called a patch. A patch is a 2D surface. Um, and then we're going to thicken that as a cut. So a little bit of hocus pocus, but follow along and you'll see that it's easy. We'll come along here to surface and we'll click patch and we'll pick this edge here and we'll click okay. And if you can't see what that did, go ahead and hide the rest of the bodies and you'll see that this patch exists as a 2D surface in space. We'll do the rest. So we'll come along here, we'll say patch, pick that edge there and that edge there and this edge here, and this final edge in here. There we go. So uh, we've got a whole bunch of patches. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to come back to solid and we're going to thicken them. So we'll say uh, create, thicken, and we'll pick these patches, three, four, five. For the direction, we'll pick symmetric, and for the operation, we'll click cut. And now we can drag the arrows, oops, drag the arrows and we'll say 10 millimeters in all directions. For good measure, what we're going to say is objects to cut and we're just going to make sure that no other body except for the lamp is chosen. Oh, we didn't name the lamp, it's body six. Okay, cool. Um, so there we go, looks good. And now body six, we're, we're going to rename that lamp. There we go, good stuff. Wonderful, okay, so there we've got our uh, sheet metal flange. Um, lastly, we're going to go and we will uh, project that sketch at the end. Of, we've, we're not, no need to recreate it. We'll go ahead and we'll find the sketch that we used before. Sketch, uh, was it? Ah, we'll just say extrude, pick this surface here, and we'll say distance to object that surface there. We'll say new body, good stuff. And now we'll just join this body with the lamp here. We'll say modify, combine, looks good. And we'll say call that shade. And now we'll add in a little fillet for strength. There we go, good stuff. We'll say four millimeters. Good. Okay. So uh, there we can see the holes that go through the other side. Good stuff. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to make a representation of the, uh, the light bulb inside. So this is going to be the little holder as well as the bulb itself. So we'll make a sketch on the bisecting plane. Come to slice, click project geometry, book, book, make them construction. And next, what we'll do is we'll, we'll make a placeholder for the, uh, for the uh, what do you call the thing that holds the light bulb? The, uh, if you know, let me know, <laughs> I'd love to know. Uh, we'll make a profile like so, make a bulb. I don't know how big a bulb is. I'll say it's 64 mils. Um, and we'll add in a construction line here that's collinear with the axis of the holder. And uh, we'll go and we'll add in, oops, give it. Okay. Uh, we'll go and we'll add in a little profile here that will just bridge the gap between the uh, bulb and the uh, holder. There we go. So we're going to make two separate bodies. Uh, the first one will be, we'll say revolve. 
and we'll call it the bulb holder. So we'll say revolve it around this axis, new body, and we'll call it bulb holder. Holder. And we'll turn the sketch back on because we want to reuse it. And, oh, uh, I should have bisected that circle. We'll go to the sketch and we'll just draw a line that happens to bisect the circle. Good stuff. And we'll say revolve, choose the cross section of the circle. There we go. And now new body, hide the sketch. And we will say that this body is the bulb. Great. Okay. So here we've got now something nice. So we've got the geometry of the lamp captured. So what we want to do next is we want to add in some materials and then we want to add in some appearances so that we can make it nice. So we'll come along here to modify and we'll go to, 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 to change up, oh, not change parameters, physical material. And we'll find the copper material. So we'll come to metal and we'll scroll down until we find copper. Good stuff. And we'll click and drag it over the bodies. Boop, boop, boop. If you were to make a bill of materials, you'd probably want to make them into to components. I have another video that I made the, the other week, I think. It was a wooden table, and uh, that's about making components from bodies. Go, go, go watch it, go watch it. Uh, I'll go and drag the copper into each of these components. Uh, for the uh, holder, I'll make it a black anodized uh, aluminium. And for the bulb, let's go ahead and make it glass. So uh, I'll scroll through the material, come to glass, and here we can put glass, clear glazing. There we go. We got a cool bulb. Looking good. Uh, last bits, we'll make those uh, the switch plastic. So we'll say uh, plastic, and we'll say acetylene resin black for the switch, and maybe for the bottom cap as well. Looking good, looking good, or at least looking representative. Okay, so we'll hit save. Control S, save early, save often. Um, and we are going to change the appearance of the bulb so that it, it's luminescent. So we'll say modify, appearance. And here we'll come along to miscellaneous. And we'll go down to emissive. And here we've got a, a few bulbs. We can say bulb A, frosted, 1500 lumens. Click and drag it over to the bulb. And there it's lit up, wow. Um, if you want to modify the material, you can right click it here and you can say edit and you can change everything about it, like its luminescence here, its reflectance, its roughness, blah, 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 blah. It's a rich tapestry that I don't know anything about. <laughs> uh, we'll say save. And lovely. So there we've got uh, our in de uh, representative design of a lamp. Um, what we'll do now is we'll create a render of this. So a uh, render is just a, a nice uh, picture of it. Uh, it will take into account things like, uh, you know, uh, shadows and ray tracing and all of the textures and all the wonders that are involved. Um, it's an art in itself. So to go to the rendering environment, we'll say, uh, come to design and we'll click render. And now it will throw it into a, an environment. I don't know what the default environment is, but uh, here we can see that it's thrown on perspective mode because it assumes that we like perspective. Uh, and here we can change, uh, if we wanted to, we could override the appearances of parts inside. So that would be where we actually add in the luminescence for the bulb. Um, here we can come to scene settings. And uh, we've got uh, two main areas. We've got settings and environment library. So environment library lets us uh, throw an environment in there. So we can click and drag, say, cool lights in there or grid lights. Um, and there's a few of them in here. If you want to get fancy, you could throw it into, say, for example, uh, here we'll throw it into a plaza and it will put it, you'll see, oh, where is our environment? Uh, oh, right here. Uh, if you can't see your environment from the environment library, if you come to settings, change the background color from solid color to environment. And there you've got an environment in which you can live. Um, I actually like the solid color, so we'll click solid color. And we'll choose a little bit less of a depressing solid color. Uh, less gray, more, there we go. Nice. Um, but I do like the reflections that come from the, the plaza. So I'll leave that in. Good stuff. Uh, here we've got uh, choices to change, say for example, the focal length. Ooh, whoa. Um, so we'll just change the focal length to 54 millimeters. Uh, here you can change the exposure. So I'll just change that to its default. And same with the brightness. 
Uh, you can change the, the brightness around. It's written into the scene by default. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, you can play around with reflections and you can play around with um, uh, a couple of other dials, which I'm not too familiar with, I'll confess. Uh, rendering is this fascinating field where it's, uh, you, know, you can play a lot around to get uh, your you desired level of realism. You can also have depth of field where you can add in a blur for things that aren't in, the, um, in a particular uh, center, but uh, I'm just going to switch that off for the sake of this render. So we're pretty happy with this lamp. It looks pretty good. Let's go and render it. So we'll say, ch -ch -ch, uh, he will say render. And now uh, we can uh, we can choose to render in different formats. So we could, you know, web, mobile, print, or custom. I'm just going to make a custom one. I'll say that it's uh, uh, maybe 1400 wide and 800 tall. Uh, we can choose to render on the cloud or local. If you want a really good render, the cloud is awesome because you can really throw the processing power of the cloud. But uh, for the sake of brevity, we're going to make it a, uh, a local render and it's standard quality. Here you can click advanced settings and you can really uh, start to tweak things. So we'll say render and it's going off. It's thinking about it. It's tracing those rays. It's calculating those reflections. I don't know, black magic wizardry that has to do with rendering. Um, and at the other end, what we'll get is a, an image which we can download. So at the moment, you can see a green bar here and it's churning away, it's thinking about it. Um, and it should be done pretty quickly. Uh, we'll just give it a minute, there we go. And here we can see, yeah, yeah man. There we go, uh, a preview of our render. Lovely, that looks great. Um, and if you wanna download it to your computer, you can hit this button here, or if you're angry at it, you wanna delete it, you can hit that button there and there. You have a render, wonderful. Um, so yeah, it's also useful to note that where you're looking at it in the uh, the screen while you're setting it up is the, the angle that it gets rendered. Wonderful, okay, I've probably overrun. I hope you learned something, I hope you enjoyed it. That's the important part, if you enjoy it, it's easy to learn. Um, if you have any ideas for what I should uh, model up next, put it in the comments below. And other than that, I'll see you next time. Thanks, bye.